Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another ink profile. I thought that today I would start with the whole panel so you could see this is sort of a little mini introduction to what we'll be doing for the next seven inks. This is Ink Flight 25 uh, from Ink Journal. And if you don't know about them, they are a company based in New Jersey and they have lots of inks and notebooks and things, but um, what uh, I love the best is the Ink Flight box. It's a subscription box. You can get just the inks or, you know, the seven ink samples, or you can get the inks and the pen goodies, which I'm still getting the whole, um, the whole enchilada. <laughs> and I just love it. So, um, I won't give prices because I'm going to link you to their site and I don't want to mess up because things do change and also depending on where you're having it shipped. But I just, uh, I just love this and we're leading off with this blue ink which reminds me very much of the, the ink that came in the holiday blends um, from Ink Journal. So it just right away reminded me and sure enough that ink made it on the panel. And what I'll do is profile each one and uh, in a separate video and I'll do a playlist for you. So the name of the ink, I still, even with lots of help from a really nice viewer who's who's been coaching me, trying to help me, I can't really pronounce things right, but it comes from Japan and it's a uh, Kyoto tag. And then, um, you know, then I, I haven't really got it yet, how to pronounce it. Let me hold it up so you can see it. Um, all the inks are this, this designation, Koi no Odo, um, except for Moonlight of of uh, this place <laughs> and uh, Stone Road of of Gion. So they, you know, I will have that all written in the description so that it won't be hard for you to find the ink and stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and start with a bath test like we usually do, and then we'll get right into the uh, notebooks and the paper samples. So here it is on Rhodia 90 gram. I do this with every ink just to see what happens. How water resistant is it and uh, what can we expect? So, and this is, this is courtesy of an idea from Brian from the pen thing. Way back when he sent me some document inks that um, he suggested that, that I try this and, and so that I could see how, how bulletproof they really were, the, the scribes inks. So, okay. So on, onward into the Rhodia Gold Book, um, my ink journal that's filling up, I'm going to actually be looking at a new one because it's filling up. So every time I do a, um, a spread in here so that little by little we fill it in and I'll have a record, I'll have what ink journal sent. And I will have, um, you know, the little swatches of each color and um, so forth. So let me just tell you a little bit. I went online and I was researching this city that these inks are, um, you know, in honor of, which is um, Kyoto. And it's Kyoto, Japan. And what I learned was, at least from the, the entry that I was reading, and I, I would like to be corrected if someone knows better, but what I read was the city wasn't entirely destroyed by World War II, and it's considered Japan's cultural center. So it has lots of temples and shrines, and it's it's one of the best preserved cities in Japan. And I thought that was really, really interesting. It went into a little more detail about how one of the generals um, won, took it off the list for bombing because he and his wife had been there on their honeymoon. So anyway, that was just of interest to me, and there's lots more. There's beautiful pictures. If you just Google it and you end up on, uh, you know, some general information, you'll find that out. So let's just get in here. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going on too much here. but <laughs> um, So this is my first uh, page where I started to work with the ink. And I did find, you know, I, I have, uh, I actually work on one side and I swivel my chair around to the back where I have my computer. So I go and find out, you know, where can you find this and how much does it cost? That's one of, you know, a curiosity. And I found it at Penn Chalet for $4.25 for a four mil sample. Um, and then the bottles were $28 for a 40 mil, but at the current moment, which is, you know, you'll have to check into this because you may be watching this video later, they, it mentioned a sale, $22.40. And I also found that Van S. 1938 and Anderson Pens is carrying these too. So, my, of course, my sample came from my, uh, from Ink Journal 
from their uh, subscription box. So um, I liked it very much in the broad nib. Uh, I didn't care for it as much on some papers in the fine nib. Although it still seemed wet enough, it just isn't saturated as much. So um, that's that's what I would say. Now let me hold this up. This is the chromatography and it's very hard to see because I'm back on coffee filters till I get some more real ones. But it, it kind of gives you a little bit of yellow, but it's very, very hard to capture with this setup I have. So it's not very saturated, and it's primarily this color here, and then it, then a little yellow starts to come out. So, okay, let me move on to the next notebook. <clears throat> uh, keeping this in the rotation, this is my little caliber memo book. And if I remember right, it was a dollar nineteen or something from CVS. It's CVS caliber paper made in Vietnam. And you know, I'm just doing a little more detail because I know some of you. It may be your first. Um, time to be on my to, to watch a video and thank you very much newcomers for coming by and uh, for subscribing here it is and um, it, it holds true to what we find it looks really nice uh, in the broad nib and then it does jump down to be a little more faded in the fine nib on this particular paper but let's turn over and see I don't believe there was any bleed through this, this paper is pretty phenomenal, and at the same time, it's a little bit, not textured, but it, it's it's dry feeling when you write, so not everybody likes it. In fact, we, I've got a couple viewers I know do not like it, but um, then there's some of us who do. So here's the Nemesine notebook. <clears throat> this one I love for, for showing off the colors. It truly, truly gives you the shading and the effect of the ink. I just love it in here. And I liked how this looked in the uh, Moon Man Mini glass nib pen. This pen can really lay down the ink. Uh, so sometimes it just darkens the ink. But when you get a lighter ink like this, then it's working to your advantage if you're using a pen like this. So as you can see, it didn't do what the, the fine nib did. It laid, laid it down really nice. In fact, you can see over here, this is the beginning of the dip. And then I never had to re-dip. So, anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. <clears throat> okay, and then the next, the final notebook here, uh, other than the visual journal, is the Cafe Note by Nanami Paper Company with Tomoe River paper in it. And um, this is pretty drastic here, what it did. You know, it, it uh, it's, here it is in the broad nib. I try not to, like, give so many opinions, but I can't help it. And then here it is in the fine nib. I didn't like writing that because not that it really felt dry, but it just looked like I needed to get new glasses as I was writing because I couldn't see it very well. But uh, so that would be something to think about in terms of letters and so on. And this is um, tabbed here because I wanted to take you back to that Ink Journal Holiday Blend Snowmageddon. So let's look at it. It is darker, the Snowmageddon, the one that Ink Journal, uh, that Tom and the folks at Ink Journal formulated, is a little more saturated, but it sure is very, very similar, like in, in shade. It's just like dialing it up just a little bit um, uh, brighter. Now let's go over here, and here we have the Snowmageddon here, and the um, uh, Hisoku, and I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but on the right. And you can see it just is really washed out compared to the Snowmageddon. So that might be of interest because you might want to mix some of those uh, Platinum Mix Freeze that come out with, uh, if you really love this color, that would be an option. So, Okay, now we've got a lot of papers. I hope I don't like crash my system here. <laughs> okay, here's the Tomoe River paper. Ooh. Oh, I really need focus. Thank you, camera. Um, the 52 gram, I don't know what I was thinking, I wrote 50 gram, white. And uh, I didn't go into the whole broad nib, fine nib business because I'm just i keeping it 100% consistent. Same pen, uh, it's always going to be the broad nib on the top and the Lamy fine nib on the bottom. This is a broad Yo-Wo in my Serendipity Hybrid pen. And this is in my Lamy Vista in a, a, a standard Lamy fine nib. 
I just love the shading that you get. For artists, and I know a few who do art journaling right in their Tomoy River paper notebooks. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's just gorgeous. We'll turn it over, but there was no bleed through. So there's an advantage to those lower saturations too. Um, let's hop on to Rhodia 80 gram dot grid paper on the white. And uh, here it is in the broad nib and in the fine nib. Uh, again, you know, personally, I don't like it when it gets so weak like that, but that's very personal. I mean, some people really like the lighter colors, and and that's cool. Uh, but if you, like, let's just say you write with an extra fine nib, and you like to be able to see the ink real good, then you would not probably like that. <clears throat> okay. So this is the Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper. Let's see if it's as close as it could be. Um... Here it is in the broad nib and the fine nib. And, you know, it didn't have as drastic of a shading and results on here as it did on the Tamoy River paper, but I like it. Did I show you whether... Okay, so in the Rhodia, it did not bleed through either. And, of course, it didn't bleed through the Claire Fontaine. That's, that's pretty hardy paper. Okay, let's look at Hamlin Optic 90 gram paper. This is out of a perforated notebook, and I just love this. <clears throat> Again, in addition to the bath test, it was Brian from the pen thing that that steered me toward this paper. Here it is in the broad nib. You can really see the shading on this. You, actually, you could see shading on all of it to some degree, but I noticed it a little more in the broad nib on this optic paper. And here it is in the fine nib. I, I'm not really fond of that, being so light. Okay. Um, leaping on to Loistrom. Here's the Loistrom 1917 dot grid paper right out of my bullet journal. Please uh, excuse this mess over here from the other side, but I hate to rip out much more paper out of that notebook, so I may be, well, I'll revisit that when I need to. Here it is on the broad nib and the fine nib. Now, this paper's thirstier, and I, I liked how it looked better coming out onto this paper from the fine nib. It was fine. <laughs> I wasn't trying to joke there. Okay, so it didn't go through at all. Okay, now, this is the paper that came in this month's ink flight box. This is the G. Lalo of France, and the ivory is what I got. I did make a boo-boo somewhere along the line. I had my fingers, I'd come from washing my hands, so that wasn't the paper's fault right there. You may not even be able to see that, but... Okay, so here it is in the broad nib and in the fine nib. Now... I got to get used to this because it's super textured and it's I don't dislike it. I just think that I'm going to like it coming out of a, a nib that is very wet and very flowy so that I don't feel like I'm bumping over these little... I write really fast, so that's another... <laughs> I walk really fast too <laughs> and I'm afraid I talk fast. Okay, here's Office Depot College Ruled Paper. Um, Again, another thirsty paper, like the Loistrum, similar to it. So here it is in the broad nib and the fine nib. And it did, it, you know, I'd, it would be okay for me to write with in there, but I probably wouldn't like it for read, read back ability there. Okay, so let's take a look at the comparison panel and we'll peek in on the way. Okay, so this is pretty much, not completely gone, but kind of in the middle. It, it's it's retained some of the ink, but not very much. Um, let's look at the comparison panel. Even though I don't have very many inks in in this... Uh, my, we're not centered. In this shade at all. So I just had to work with what I have. And it's in the middle. Here's the His, Hisuku Today's Ink, right in the middle. Um, and again, I felt like the very closest I had was the Ink Journal Holiday Blend Snowmageddon. So that was interesting. But that doesn't mean anything. You guys probably have encountered other blue inks that look more similar. And you're, um, depending on what you like. And, and it doesn't surprise me that I don't have too many that are like this. Because if you look around it, you see more what I go for, which is highly saturated bright inks. But I'm coming to really appreciate the, the more subtle um, colors too and what they'll do. <clears throat> So, let's see. I don't know what I can really say about this. The other one I had that was similar but no cigar was a Diamine Eau de Nil. 
um, similar but brighter and darker somehow, not quite the same. Um, and I'm not looking for exact matches. I'm just looking to compare. <clears throat> Excuse me. So hopefully you'll have something that's on here that so that you have a reference point. Diamine Marine is pretty popular. Maybe you have that one, and it's much, much brighter. Uh, totally out of the range, really. So I felt a little bit bad about that, but that's what I have. So let's see what happened on the... Uh... This is my visual journal, and um, it didn't really surprise me that it was very subtle and blurry and so on, because it really reacted to the um, to the water. And that's what you do with this technique. This originally was Nick Stewart's technique. And you just put the water down, and then you dab some um, paint, and then you put another water down below, leaving a space, and you use your pen to kind of create effects. And it, it, it really varies greatly from ink to ink. And then this, I just put the water down in a big circle blob and put some ink down. So this uh, is totally different than say, I mean, take a look at that. <laughs> what happens with the Napa Burgundy? That, I mean, that's not fair. But it, it just shows you that um, we're not, they're not all the same. They'll do very different things. Some of them will show you the chromatography uh, a lot, um, and they'll just really, like, wow you with all these weird colors that come out. But I, after that, I thought, you know, this ink would be good for a background. Now, I don't think the background I did is very good, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I went into my really, um, really messy process notebook. This is just a, um, okay, this paper in the, in the one I show you all the time is 140 pound watercolor paper. <clears throat> but this is just mixed media paper. And what I would do maybe would be to put a quote over it or, or use this kind of background just to start something anything really um uh, but it it faded a lot i mean lots more even than on this paper but i thought i'd show you anyway because it was fun just to do it just to have it there okay so that's pretty much what what i found out about this ink so far and we'll be learning more because we'll be right back in to the next one in the next video um and this one uh, this beautiful green here, Ink Journal has put in their little itinerary that that is a um, limited edition, I believe. Let's see. Yes, it says, this limited edition ink takes its color from the underside of a leaf. It has a delicate, tender green heel. So this will be next right here. And if you notice, some interesting things came out. So I'm quite eager to see how that looks. I mean, there's not one ink on here that I wasn't interested in. So, wow, my hat is off to you, <clears throat> Tom and Ink Journal, <clears throat> and everyone there, because this is cool. So, thank you guys for joining me. And I want to show you just one more thing before I close this video. <clears throat> <clears throat> my goodness, it, you could tell it's a furnace running time. Okay, so here are three samples that just came in. So last month we did Tasha inks. And I was so impressed with that ink that I just decided to get some more of the samples. And I did the pink one and the orange one that were outside of the ink flight. And now I have these three. This one here is a brown. And it's just gorgeous. <clears throat> and then the Midori green. Oh my goodness, that's... That's amazing, too. And this one just made me just... I had no idea. When I saw this online, I didn't want to purchase it. But I thought, you know, I love these inks so much because it looks so light. But this is a bright... To me, this is bright like turquoise. And I just love it. Um, so I did get these from Anderson Pens. Because they had all three in stock. And yay, I'd love to order from them when I can, too. So... Um, so I'm in a quandary because uh, when I start the ink flights, I like to just go and get them all done. But <laughs> it's going to be really hard not to want to do those too. But maybe this will just help me uh, stay focused on the ink flight and then get a chance to do those three before the, uh, <laughs> before the marching flight comes in. It's so funny how that is. We think that a month is long, but 
this is a short month and everything so hope you're having a good day and happy valentine's day tomorrow to everybody this these little things came in a little packet and i thought they were cute but anyway have a great day tomorrow i probably won't see you other than comments um replies tomorrow because i got some special plans with my husband so thank you very much and i'll see you next time bye for now